You had people running for president who wanted to use Black Lives Matter, but didn't want to talk about how they were going to make Black Lives Matter. So they would talk about the middle class or they would talk about HBCUs. I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with like putting food on people's tables and getting people health care? And we deserve that. So before the break, um, you were talking about how you are not in this to be a brand, but nevertheless, with the popularity that you've now attained, it's also, as you, it seemed to me, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that while you've tried to use this fame and celebrity for, to build other resources, to build power, but it has a dramatic impact on your life. You mentioned that you're a very private person, but I know, and I know in personal chats that we've had that this has come at also at the expense of your personal security. That's right. So talk about that part of it. What has, how has this, you know, movement and the attention that you have received um, impacted how, um, how safe you feel in this mm -hmm. country? Mm -hmm. um, it was awful this summer in particular, uh, but it's been awful for a while. Um, you know, we get death threats um, pretty regularly, um, online, right, all the time. Um, and this summer in particular, uh, I got visited at my home by the FBI. They found my name and Patrice's name and a couple of elected officials' names um, on a piece of paper inside of the home of a man who was arrested on weapons charges, who they also came to know was a member of a white supremacist organization. And um, they had a duty to warn and literally that's what they do. They come, they tell you the tiniest bit of information, scare the shit out of you. And then they're like, be cool and dip, right? <laughs> so here's that on that. Um, and it did, it meant that I you know, have and still do have um, round the clock security. Now, with that being said, um, what I, what, the way that I feel safe is a couple ways. Um, Number one, it's talking about it. I'm not the only organizer or activist right now who is getting these kinds of threats, but I am more visible than a lot of the people who are getting these threats. And for a lot of folks, they don't know who to turn to, they don't know who to talk to about it, um, and they don't know if they should be talking about it. A lot of people think that if you are vocal about the threats that you're getting, that it'll encourage it. And it's actually quite the opposite. Um, it's important for people to know what's going on with you so that they can look for you and check on you and know that there have been these things going on. And so if you go missing, people don't think you just dipped out for a second. People know, no, she's been getting death threats for a couple months. Um, we need to put the fire up, right? So that's a thing, but also because community will step up for you. Um, and what I have found is that through this process, um, you know, when I started having to have security like that, it forced me to talk to my neighbors. And I had been kind of like in the cut, you know what I mean? Just trying to do what I do like quietly. And um, it forced me to talk to all my neighbors and be like, hey, this is what's happening with me. This is why you're seeing all this. And every single one of my neighbors was like, yo, that's dope. And also, ain't nobody gonna fuck with you over here. Let me tell you what, my one neighbor put a Black Lives Matter flag right on her house. She was like, I am telling you right now, these people better not because we will turn up. So it, 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 it was a beautiful thing at the same time. And I feel much more safe because of that than I do because of security, right? And I think when we talk about it too, um, it, it also takes the shame away from it. I think there's a way in which people say crazy shit to you um, in the cut and they do it in the cut because um, they would be ashamed, ashamed to say some of the stuff in public. And Jamel, I know you get these, right? People oh, call yeah. you all kinds of things and talk they about do. your mama and your mm -hmm. grandpa and, you know, you're an evil, terrible person. And if you don't get it out somehow, you internalize it. And um, so that has helped me a lot too, just talking about it and um, engaging my community around it as well. Um, was it ever at a point where you wondered if maybe you should back off a little bit? Did it ever make you um, want to, you know, sort of be more guarded about 
what you said or just you know turn turn down a little because you realized you were inciting some some people not that it was your fault but I don't know if that ever crossed your mind yeah I mean look um for me this summer you know I, I haven't been at BLM since 2017 so um the weird part for me about this summer was that this thing that I helped to build is all over the place. And I'm like, I'm not there anymore. I'm building black political power over at the Black Futures Lab. And so um, in a lot of ways that was helpful for me. Um, And also, honestly, yes, there are times when you're like, well, let me, you know, um, be more diplomatic. But this time around, I have to tell you, it actually emboldened me in a weird way. Like I just, I kind of just got to a point where I was like, you know what, fuck y'all. Like, honestly, this is exactly why this is happening. Okay, so let's just keep it a buck. Like you just, maybe it's getting older. I don't know, but I, for me, I was like, no, I'm gonna say it louder actually. And let me put a fine point on it so you didn't miss it. You know right. I mean? Let me say it in all caps. Now exactly. what? <laughs> exactly. In case exactly. you miss me the exactly. first fucking time. Right? Exactly. exactly. No, I, I feel I, I I understand because people I've been asked that question a lot as well. Like, oh, did you ever think about basically calming down? I'm like, hell no. That's it right. just makes me want to piss right. you yeah. off uh, even more, even which more. is why <laughs> Lil Nas X is my hero of the moment because <laughs> yeah. he is. A I whole just, mood, a whole he's mood. He's a whole ass mood. I just mm-hmm. love it. And had uh, the social media plan to back it up. He was like, oh no, I'm he, gonna go with y'all trolls. Oh, he he thought about this. So he did. thought about this. He plotted. So did. Right? So did. You know, it, for my Game of Thrones fans out there, he was like Cersei sitting there plotting to blow up the whole fucking city. <laughs> yeah, like, totally. That was Lil Nas X. He was like, I've totally. been thinking about this. Listen, and waiting on the moment. <laughs> trolling governors. He was like... <laughs> He was like, don't you have a job to do? You're like a whole ass governor. You should be doing your job instead of worrying about my videos. How about that? Pretty much. That's a fact. (laughs) There is nothing to be disputed with that. Uh, You just said it a second second ago and it was perfect because it was where I was heading next. Um, You decided to leave Black Lives Matter a a few years ago and, and now you're doing Black Futures Lab. Why was that time the time for you to uh, branch off and do uh, and concentrate more on the political aspect and and, and harnessing political power? Mm -hmm. Look, I've been doing this work for a long time. And one of the things that I um, have always struggled with is this question of political power and how we build it. And I find that often um, in our movements, because there's so much corruption in government, because there's so much big money in politics, we're so deeply cynical about the possibility of change in that arena. And so we leave it and we leave it for other people to shape. And that's exactly what our opposition has been doing for 40 years. They have not shied away from that. They have taken it on with all the contradictions. They don't like each other. They think politicians are corrupt too. Um, They just prefer to be them. (laughs) So, uh, you know, for me, I am about changing the rules and making the rules. And that's the only way I think we're gonna get the kind of change that we need. I don't think it's gonna be some um, moral clarity that people get. (laughs) It's going to be rules, right? That then get enforced and they get resourced. And we've got to engage in that. And coming out of 2016, you know, it was the same stuff. It was like you had people running for president who wanted to use Black Lives Matter but didn't want to talk about how they were going to make Black Lives Matter. So they would talk about the middle class or they would talk about HBCUs. I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with like putting food on people's tables and getting people health care? And we deserve that. And because our voices aren't in that room, they can get away with that. They can show up and eat fried chicken and check off the box that they talk to Black people. And that's unacceptable. So the way I got through that year was plotting on how it was going to be different the next time. And I um, quickly pivoted and I built an organization that really focuses on how to experiment with civic engagement. How do we do black voter work differently so that none of us get left behind, so that it's not um, purely based on trying to get to the table, you know? Um, And so we have a different level of engagement. We deserve a lot more. 
So that's really where the lab comes from. And um, I get to do a, incredible things with a team of people that is brilliant and it, we are all black. So, you know, we conducted the largest survey of black people in America in 156 years, learning about the contours of our communities, using that data to then shape the Black Agenda 2020, which we released um, last February, which literally is a legislative roadmap for how we make Black Lives Matter from City Hall to Congress. And that was informed by that Black Census project. We also, when the pandemic happened uh, last year, we released a COVID-19 relief and recovery plan for Black America. And a lot of the things that are in that relief and recovery plan are the things that are showing up in the stimulus bills. And that's a good thing. And now we're pushing for the monthly stimmies, which we talked about then. And now people are coming around to it. And that's a good thing because that means that more roofs are gonna go up over people's heads. It means food is gonna be on people's tables. And that's really what we're about. It's like winning real things for real people and making sure that black folks are not just at the table, but that we're setting the menu. Well, with you having such a clear understanding of what political power can attain, why not run for public office? Um, I won't rule it out. I won't rule it out. Um, for me right now, I'm really building my organizations and trying to build institutions for us um, that can fight for us and that can win for us and with us. Um, and, you know, if the right opportunity came up, um, I would definitely consider it. When you see, uh, as you think about what your own political future may hold, when you see someone like Cori Bush, who was on the ground in Ferguson and um, as an activist, does that maybe make you believe that it's possible that Alicia can stay Alicia, even if she's in a, you know, political office? Yeah, Corey is amazing. Yeah, and I love her. Yeah. She is somebody who every time I see her, I'm just cheering and I'm so excited and proud of her. Um, yes, it does. And, you know, I, I live in Oakland, so my congresswoman is Barbara Lee and she keeps it real a hundred percent of the time, even when she's the only one, you know what I'm saying? So um, she is a dear friend of mine and a mentor and somebody who uh, was mentored herself by Shirley Chisholm. And she talks a lot about how the point, right, of even doing that job is to bring our full selves into it so that we can get stuff for our people. So I do know it's possible. And okay. I can see myself there. I could too, actually. And, I, and I'm glad that you had the answer that you did because I just knew, I was like, she's gonna be like, hell no, I'm never running. <laughs> That's what but, I used to say. But uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, you can't you know. be always encouraging people to run and to get involved politically. And then when you get asked, we're like, no, I don't know if I want to do it. You know? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs>